Hey everybody, welcome to how-to videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This video is going to focus on how to make a bar graph in Excel and it is part of the massively open online video textbook for the introduction to statistics. If you want to know about that further, check out mathandstatistics.com. So let's get started just by looking at our data set and in this case I'm going to create a bar chart for the variable year in college. Year in college uh, has a few different types of data that can represent it. It is discrete, qualitative, and ordinal data. So a student can be a first year, a student can be a sophomore, a student can be a senior, a student can be a junior. So this is perfect for a bar chart because it'll allow you to compare uh, how many of each types of students you have in your data set. So in order to make a bar chart, the first thing I like to do is grab the data that I'm interested in graphing copy it, and I like to use control C for copy. Start or open a new sheet in Excel by clicking, clicking the plus button, and then control V, or if you right click, you can also use any of the paste options as well. So now we have the data set, or I should say a copy of the data set that we want to work with in a new sheet. And you can get back to the original data set simply by toggling over. The reason this is nice is because it doesn't destroy your original data set and it keeps it intact. And you can work in sort of a work area without worrying about um, essentially making a mess of your original data set. So once you have your data that you're going to work with, the next thing is seeing what not to do. So it's tempting to just highlight all your data and try to create a bar chart insert, we come over here, we see they have some nice looking bar charts, we click on one, and it makes this ridiculous thing, which clearly is not a bar chart and is not at all what you wanted it to do. So the thing that you have to do in Excel in order to create pie charts or bar charts or any of, of, of the like, is you have to set your data up in a way that Excel understands what it is you're trying to do. Now you can do this by hand, or you can use a pivot table. If you were to do this by hand, what you would have to first decide is what do you want your bar chart to look like? Uh, Excel is very much a tool and you are very much the brains. In this particular case, I would want to separate my data set into uh, first year and the next grouping is going to be the sophomores and the next grouping is going to be the juniors and the next grouping is going to be the seniors. So this is the year in school and I want to compare this group. So I want to know, well, how many first years do I have? How many sophomores do I have? And so on. In other words, I need to set up a frequency table. Once I have a frequency table, then I can use that frequency table to build a bar chart or a pie graph or any other chart that I wish. However, what if your data set is enormous? I certainly don't want to sit here counting all the first years I have. There is a way to program Excel with COUNTIF, but there's an even easier way, and that is to simply use a pivot table. Pivot tables seem intimidating, but they're actually quite easy to use. Given any data set, you have two rules. One, your column of data or data set needs to have a title in the very first row. In this case, my title is year in college, and under that title is all of the data. The second rule is none of your data slots can be empty or blank. If you do happen to have blank data, which is normal in a data set, just type in the word blank. And this way, that'll be part of your analysis as well, because you do have a total data set. If this particular element was blank, that is actually a lack of, of information there, and you'd want to keep track of that. So again, the two rules are you need to have a title and all of your data needs to be filled in, no blanks. Once you have that, click anywhere, click pivot table. And the next thing Excel wants to know is what data are you interested in placing in your pivot table? I'm gonna highlight the title and all the data with my mouse. And once I release, it says, okay, there's your data. Do you wanna put this in a new workbook? Or do you want to keep it in an existing workbook, this one right here? I'm going to open it up a new one because I think it's more organized, and I'll click OK. What this does is it opens up sheet number five. So I still have my original data. I still have my data set that I copied over. 
And now I have another sheet down here that is my pivot table area. Remember that my original data was one column of data that represented a student's year in college. So when I come over to the pivot table, the only variable that shows up here in the fields is year in college because that is in fact the data that I'm working with and the only data that I'm working with. If I click this, Excel will begin to build the pivot table for me. And that's why pivot tables are so worthwhile to learn how to use. It automatically put the year in college in the rows area, meaning each different year in college, whether it be first year, junior, senior, or sophomore, is one of the rows in the pivot table. Now, one of the things I'm noticing here is I don't want senior to be here. I want it to be last because I want these in order. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to move this down. And I also want to move junior down because I would like these to be in order. So I'm going to move junior down as well. Now I've reorganized the beginning of my pivot table. Well, I want to create a bar graph. That's our goal here. And so I need to know how many first years are there, how many sophomores, and etc. Excel will do this for us automatically. Now look what happened. When I clicked anywhere blank, all of a sudden my pivot table information went away. That's normal, and if I want to get it back, I just click anywhere inside the pivot table, and it all comes back. Now I would like to know how many of these different years and colleges I have. So I'm going to take the information from that data column. I'm going to drag it over into the values area. The values area happens to default to count or the number of. So I'm lucky because it automatically gave me exactly what I wanted. There's 10 first years, 7 sophomores, 7 juniors, and 6 seniors in my data set. However, I can change this field value to sum, average, max, min, product. I can count numbers, standard deviation for sample or population, etc. It just so happens I want the count, so I'm going to leave it as the count. Now I have exactly what I need to create my bar graph. And so I will go ahead and click anywhere inside the pivot table. And I can then go back to insert, choose that bar graph again. But now when I highlight it, it looks the way I want it to look. Because now Excel understands that I have 10 first years, 7 sophomores, and so on. So I'm going to click that because that's basically what I'm looking to create here. And I can make this a little bit bigger by dragging it with the mouse. I can change the title, so year in college we'll call it, enter, and it changes the title for me. I can change this number if I wish, but I want to leave it as total because that's what I'm doing. If I click on any of these bars and then right click, I can add the data labels. So I can go ahead and click there to add the data labels. I can click onto the data labels and then click home to make those data labels bigger. I can make those data labels bold. I can change the color of the data labels. I can also change the color of the bar, bars themselves and do quite a number of other things. If I double click on this graph, and let's make this just a little bit smaller here by dragging it with the mouse, it brings up the graph editing area. So how did this come up? I double clicked on this bar. And so it gives me a number of options like the width between my bars. I can change that width. I can make them really skinny. I can make them really, really wide. And I like that idea because I actually like my bars to be nice and wide. I can click down here and I can start editing the alignment down here. I can click on home and make these bigger so that they're easier to read. I can make them bold. So once you've created your graph, you actually have a lot of different options. You can click here and change the color of these. So let's go to our color area. Let's fill this in with uh, varying colors. I kind of like the varying colors because then it color codes all the different options and it's easier to read. So you can see that once you're here, once you've created the pivot table and you've created the graph, 
you can start playing around in the graphing editing area and do all kinds of different things. Once you're done with your graph, click on the outside of your graph here. If you hit Control C to copy, you can actually open a Word document and then hit Control V and it'll paste your graph right in to that Word document and you're all set. So thank you for joining me and I hope you're enjoying the series.